I'm not trying to sell you on this idea in the sense of converting you to it. I want you to play with it. I want you to think of its possibilities. I'm not trying to prove it. I'm just putting it forward as a possibility of life to think about. So then, this means that you're not victims of a scheme of things, of a mechanical world or of an autocratic God. The life you're living is what you have put yourself into. Only you don't admit it because you want to play the game that it's happened to you. In other words, I got mixed up in this world. My parents, I had a father who got hot pants over a girl and she was my mother. And uh, because he got, he was, just a, he was just a horny old man. And as a result of that, I got born. And I blame him for it and say, well, that's your fault. You've got to look after me. And he says, I don't see why I should look after you. You're just a result. <laughs> and, but let's suppose we admit that I really wanted to get born and that I was the ugly gleam in my father's eye when he approached my mother. That was me. I was desire. And I deliberately got involved in this thing. Look at it that way instead. And that even if I got myself into an awful mess, and I got born with syphilis and the great Siberian itch and tuberculosis and uh, in a Nazi concentration camp, nevertheless, this was a game which was a very far out play. It was a kind of cosmic masochism. But I did it. Isn't that an optimal game rule for life? Because if you play life on the supposition that you're a helpless little puppet that got involved, or if you play it on the supposition that it's a, a frightful, serious risk and that we really ought to do something about it and uh, so on, it's a drag. There's no point in going on living unless we make the assumption that the situation of life is optimal. That really and truly, we are all in a state of total bliss and delight. But we are going to pretend we aren't just for kicks. You play non-bliss in order to be able to experience bliss. And you can go as far out as non-bliss as you want to go. And when you wake up, it'll be great. You know, you can slam yourself on the head with a hammer because it's so nice when you stop. And it makes you realize, you see, how, how great things are when you forget that that's the way it is. And that's just like black and white. You don't know black unless you know white. You don't know white unless you know black. It's simply fundamental. So then, here's the drama. My metaphysics, let me be perfectly frank with you, are that there is the central self. You can call it God. You can call it anything you like. And it's all of us. It's playing all the parts of all beings whatsoever, everywhere and anywhere. And it's playing the game of hide and seek with itself. It gets lost, it gets involved in the farthest out adventures. But in the end, it always wakes up and comes back to itself. And when you're ready to wake up, you're going to wake up. And if you're not ready, you're going to stay pretending that you're just a little, poor little me. And uh, since you're all here and engaged in this sort of inquiry and listening to this sort of lecture, I assume that you're all on the process of waking up. Or else you're teasing yourselves with some kind of <laughs> flirtation with waking up, which you're not serious about. But I assume maybe you are not serious but sincere, that you are...